Hey friends, I'm Otis Gibbs, and this is my buddy Kevin Gordon. He's going to tell you a story about when Lucinda Williams sang in his kitchen. I uh, first met Lucinda Williams not long after I moved to Nashville. She had been given copies of two records while she was on tour in New Zealand. The CDs were put out by a label in Auckland, um, and it was my first record as a solo artist, whatever, uh, and my friend Bo Ramsey, uh, his Down to Bastrop record, which is great. And she somehow found, found out that I was in Nashville and at the time, Ramsey was actually going to come down and play a gig with me, just play guitar in the band. And I used to play down at the Boardwalk Cafe on Nolansville Road. So I had this gig, and she, Lucinda was living in Austin at the time. So, and she had been in touch with Ramsey, I guess, and she had said that she was going to come to that gig. She was going to drive to Nashville to hear us play. Comes around to the day and the evening and, uh, you know, we get set up and all and play the whole gig. No, no Lou. And I guess maybe, you know, an hour or so after we were completely done, she rolls in, you know. <laughs> and uh, she was great. Still, you know, beautiful, beautiful human, you know, great artist, um, songwriter, whatever, you know. My my then girlfriend, now wife, and I invited her to stay at our place. We were over by Sylvan Park in this uh, half a duplex that, you know, was tiny, tiny. It was me and Boo and... Lucinda and Bo staying in our, in our little crib. And all I remember is like two days of like nothing but like red wine and John Lee Hooker records, you know, <laughs> <laughs> which is how you'd want it, right? You know, a uh, great time. And one of the most poignant moments of that time was us sitting in the kitchen, me and Bo and Lucinda, trading songs. You know, we were trading songs. I remember hearing some early versions of what would become songs on car wheels, you know. Um, it was the first time I'd, I had encountered a, a songwriter who actually had had their shit together, like... In, in when it came to their stuff, their their lyrics, like she had this accordion file, you know, and would go through and pull out, you know, the latest version of whatever song, you know, and she would try it out, you know. For some reason, I I, I remember, I think I heard an early version of uh, Drunken Angel, the song for Blaze Foley. Um, the last thing she played, uh, she did a Hank Williams song. I don't even remember which one, but there was something about the sound of her voice in my kitchen with me sitting there. Um, the, um. Jesus, I'm getting emotional just thinking about it. Um, the emotional power of that. I remember just standing up, taking my guitar, putting it on the couch in the other room, going straight, straight back to the bedroom. Boo was already asleep. I got in bed 
and I cried like a baby. And it's still, I'm still like, man, it was so heavy. Um, so, you know, it was very apparent to me at the time that this was, you know, a force of nature. <laughs>